My name's Charlie Waite and I'm a landscape photographer and I've been photographing the landscape probably for 35 years. Uh, it all started rather a long time ago but it began with uh, a book with a wonderful writer called Adam Nicholson called the National Trust Book of Long Walks and that went on to a book called Landscape in Britain and then Landscape in France and then Celebration of Various Different Countries uh, all over the world, well certainly Europe and um, the illustrated book market was very alive and well in the 80s and the 90s and throughout that period I used a Hasselblad camera. Um, it was the only camera for me because I, I never even considered using another one and partly because I knew it was dependable and that mattered an enormous amount and I knew that the clockwork mechanism was something that I could really really get along with. I was able to put a Polaroid back on, I could put a film back on, I was very quick at you know um, working out the exposure and the whole business of using the camera was was a pleasurable experience. It wasn't just a tool, and that may, meant a lot to me. I think it's not too dissimilar to somebody, you know, enjoying driving a particular car. And I got to know it really well. You know, hundreds of thousands of rolls of film went through these two bodies, and the lenses. I think the lens uh, widest was 40 mil, and the longest was the 350. Over four lenses, you know, it was fine. 40, 50, 80. 150, 250 and 350, something like that. And um, I always enjoyed the whole business of using the camera. And then the D word suddenly arrived, the digital world. And a very big part of me resisted that. And I knew I wasn't on my own. I was definitely not on my own. I knew that there were a lot of us who, was, who were not suspect as such, but didn't want to let go of, of what had become a very personal and enjoyable experience of using a camera that we got really fond of. We didn't want to stop using it. And whilst we might have had other brands, we still felt that that was our kind of baby. All Hasselblad users, I think, felt that, and probably still do today. So the, the answer was either to put it in the attic and never use it again, Definitely the answer was not to sell it. That was definitely not an option. One just didn't sell your Hasselblad camera. But putting it in the attic was an option. It was a rather sad one, but it's one that I took. And I only probably use my Hasselblad probably, I would think, for, for, every, for every week of photography, I probably used it maybe 10 weeks a year. And was not, I wasn't impressed when I think how it, how much it mattered to me. Then in very recent months I heard of the CFV 50C digital back with this astonishing sensor. To begin with I didn't believe it. To begin with I thought yeah 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 it's just kind of marketing speak. It can't, it can't have nearly 14 and a half stops dynamic range. It can't deliver that kind of resolution and definition that I remember enjoying from a, a roll of Velvi or Ektachrome 64 but I'd like to see whether it does. And so I've acquired one and I have absolutely no regrets. It's, it's difficult to go from film to digital, but the hurdle that I anticipated, which was one of quality, definition and resolution, was never there. The usage, very straightforward, very easy. Uh, the resilience you feel it's still there. The line of the design of the back, this may seem a rather kind of uh, non, not, not something that you'd be particularly keen on, but the photographer is, the aesthetics of the camera, it continues the aesthetics. When you put the CFV 50C back on, you know that it just looks like your old back. I've had it for a, a, a few weeks and I already have developed a love affair with it. And I'm really pleased about that, but I had very grave doubts and I've been completely, completely, I'm completely wrong about those doubts. They were based on nothing. So I'm really thrilled to be using it. I think the, the um, joy of seeing it, uh, downloading it using the very easy software, the focus software that Hasselblad provide, I think that's very straightforward, very easy. Uh, probably don't need any more than that unless one wants to do a little bit of cloning. So the entire package 
I almost feel I was waiting for it, <laughs> kind of thing. And it's arrived, and I'm a very happy bunny. And will I carry on with film? Probably, but nothing like as much, nothing like as much. So um, I'm, a happy bu I'm a happy bunny. One of my anxieties about the back, the digital back, was that I would have to put a cable from it into the body. And that was something I really didn't want to have to do. I thought that would be too complicated, I might lose the cable, it might be damaged. I just was hoping, when I learnt more about it, I discovered this was the case, that you just put the back on in exactly the same way as I used to put my A12 backs on. Exactly the same. And that was absolutely wonderful. I just thought, oh my word, here it goes, straight on, with as much ease as putting on an A12 back. The battery fits very snugly underneath, has very long lasting, carried two or three batteries with me, really fantastic. And then when I looked at the, the, um, the cost implication, to begin with I thought, well, it's quite a bit of money, but people spend money on cameras, and why not? And then I thought, well, wait a minute, what would I have spent? What would I have spent if I had bought hundreds, thousands of rolls of film over a two or three year period? And of course I realised that the expense on the film far right weighed the cost of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the back. I already had a computer, most people do. I already had software, but it came with the back. So really, in a very short space of time, uh, I'm going to find that actually, odd though this may seem, I'm saving money. And I think that's a very relevant thing in these days, you know, when you want to, when you want to be aware of the economics, your own personal economics. And the other thing that mattered to me a lot was hold on a minute, it's not square. It was always square, that was the joy. I could crop in any way I wanted. Well, I was very pleased to discover, and that was quite a nice surprise, that I could go in the way that one can go with some compact cameras, from panoramic, 16.9, to 4.3, whatever it is, 3.2, and then square. Exactly the same thing is possible to go from the rectangular, familiar 6.4.5 type format, to the square. And I think that's that's a huge relief to me because that's like coming home. And I, when I learned that the square was available, that meant an enormous amount. I don't, I'm not sure I would have got it if it didn't offer me that. And I love the fact that I can do that. It matters hugely. And of course, not every image will be square. But for many, many years, in fact, even books I did were square formatted because Charlie Boy <laughs> provided square images. So I was known as a, as kind of Mr. Square. And I still think it's a very contemporary, very kind of unusual format, but it's much loved. It's really much loved, especially by book publishers. And uh, a lot of guidebooks I did for the National Trust, surprise, surprise, were square. I remember the designer saying, well, you shoot square, we'll make the book square. And so there are lots of um, books and periodicals and magazines that uh, have square images on them because I supply them with square square images. So, you know, it's a lovely thought, that. Landscape photographers are always thankful for work. You may think, you know, oh, they get work all the time. But um, fashion photographers do, uh, documentary photographers do, but landscape photographers with the, with the possibility of getting stock, uh, you know, Flickr and Facebook and all the rest of it, the images all over the place. So it's very nice to be asked to go and photograph for a very specific reason. And just recently, it's come to my knowledge that there is an amazing organization called Ramsar, R-A-M for Mike, S-A-R. And they, they really are the, if you like, the, the, the pivotal organization to which 168 countries are signed up to, to bring the very important message to the world that wetlands are going. They're going. In fact, the CEO told me recently that in years to come there will not be wars about territory and food. There'll be wars about water. And I was pretty shocked by that. And I said, I'd like to play a part. And he said, we'd like you to play a part. We'd like you to come and photograph the wetlands in Uruguay, where we're having a big convention. So I will be taking my Hasselblad and I'll be taking my wonderful new CFV 50C back and I will shoot all of those wetlands, of which there are three sites in Uruguay, on the Hasselblad camera for two reasons. One is 
I want to come home to my Hasselblad and what a lovely place to go to do that, Uruguay. Two, I've never been there before. I'm sure lots of people have. And three, what happens if Ramsar say, we love these images, which we rather hope they may say, but we like to make them six foot by six foot or whatever size. And I will have no anxiety at all about the fact that I will be able to make large prints. And I know the viewing distance is determined by the size of the print, but whereas in the past there's always a little bit of anxiety when you scan a 6-6 tranny, even drum scan, there is a limit. And I think I will feel very confident. There's of course a limit with all enlargements, but I'll be very confident if he says we want it four or five foot square or six by four or whatever it is. And I think it's going to be a very exciting journey. And I leave on the 26th of May. And perhaps by the time this little feature is uh, produced, I will have been and come back and we'll be able to share with our, our friends in the industry what a wetland looks like in Uruguay. Going off on, a, on an adventure is a wonderful experience. Going off to a country where one's never been to before, like Uruguay, is a really exciting experience. Going off to Uruguay with my Hasselblad is really hard to describe and I think I can only describe it without getting too emotional as going off with my lover again. I mean it's like falling in love again and, it, and I really mean that. You know when I think that for 30 years I used my Hasselblad camera and then for a, a recent period just to shelve it and now to pick it up again and, and she and I, for some reason she is a girl, for she and I to go off together you know with my kit, with my lenses and just to feel that I'm in the zone in Uruguay, with my dear friend, again, is hard to beat.